little broken up signals are discriminated signals and I'm going to ignore them. Now I've heard a clear signal. That indicates a good target. I'm going to come at different directions over that target to see if my target breaks up at all. In this case, it doesn't. I'm going to, at this time, look at my display. Up until now, I've been concentrating on swinging and searching the area. The display indicates that it's a good target. I'm going to want to know where the center of the target is so I can pinpoint it and measure the depth. I squeeze the trigger in and make an X over the target. In this case, I've got VCO audio on, which is, which is giving me a higher pitch sound when I'm directly over the center of the target, which, which de depreciates as I go past it, and I'll make an X. And with the highest pitch, I can find out where the center is by looking down at my display. It measures the depth, and then I can dig my target. If I didn't use VCO audio, it would sound like this. It does not have that high pitch sound. It merely makes a larger noise as it goes over the center target. The largest part of the sound, or the loudest part of the sound is directly over the target. Then I can dig my target. We'd like to take this opportunity to give you uh, a few of the golden rules, or what we like to call the code of ethics. You know, each of us has a responsibility to the rest of the people in this hobby to uh, maintain ourselves in the proper uh, way. Uh, Jimmy, you want to start with some of the uh, different rules or code of ethics? Yes, I think the first one to remember always is to ask permission uh, to go on the property from the landowner. You can't assume that you can just dig in someone's property. And if that person says no, uh, accept it graciously, thank them, uh, and leave. Right. And, uh, you know, if they do allow you to detect on their land, you would want to, uh, you know, if you open a gate, you want to close a gate. Uh, you just really want to treat their property uh, in a way that you would want your property to be treated. So uh, just, uh, you know, treat, their, treat your property in the proper way. And I think uh, also remember that to observe the laws of the particular area, there are different regulations in different parts of the country that apply to uh, digging things out of the ground, and you should know those before you uh, uh, enter an area. Right. And, uh, you know, but if you get permission to hunt an area, you want to go ahead and get uh, an agreement with the landowner so that once, uh, if something good would happen to be found, there wouldn't be any arguments on whose it was uh, or any hard feelings over it. So just have a verbal understanding as to, uh, you know, what they would like to have and what you would like to have if you do happen to find something good. That's right. And so much of this is common sense and common courtesy. We, sh we all are wearing pouches so that when we pick up trash, we can put it in the pouch and carry it out with us. And probably the most obvious thing is how we leave the ground behind us. We need to know how to dig a hole. You know, Keith, I notice a lot of people, if they happen to dig a bad target, rather than putting it in their pouch and carrying it away, they'll just stick it back in the hole and cover it back up again. They're th you know, their thinking is that, uh, you know, the person that comes along behind them, who cares if, if they have to dig a bad target again? So, you know, have respect for the rest of the people and the landowners. If you dig a bad target, don't put it back in the hole. Put it in your pouch and carry it home and throw it away in the proper manner. That's exactly right. And I think it's important, too, when you ask the person to dig that isn't just a general, can I dig on your property, find out exactly where uh, that you can dig. There's some people who don't assume that you would not go into their garden bed, for example, or their vegetable garden and you might think that he gave me permission to dig here, I can dig anywhere I want. So have that clear at the beginning. Right, and then explain to them how you dig. Uh, a lot of times that will uh, gain you permission where you might not otherwise. If they understand that you're not out there with a big shovel uh, and digging a big hole, and you know, uh, that's, that's uh, also an important part of it. And uh, while I, I just hit on a subject there, uh, you know, use the proper tools for the areas that you're in. Uh, you don't want to go down to the hardware store, buy a full-size shovel, and head out to your local park. Uh, you're going to get shut down in a hurry. So, you know, you dig with uh, small, inconspicuous tools, uh, unintimidating tools, and uh, just use common sense in, in items like that. Yeah, that's true. That's right. Just showing the property owner how carefully we treat their property when we dig a hole is very often the key to getting access to the property. Yeah, because you may want to go back again sometime. That's well, I think now's probably the time to demonstrate how we do dig a hole. And I'll go ahead and do that if you fellas want to go find something real good. One of the first things we need to do after we locate the target is pinpoint it. And we have a variety of ways to do that. First of all, 
If it's a shallow target, we can use a brass probe, a steel probe, a screwdriver, which is going to make a very small hole. And we pinpoint around the target. And very often, we can find it. And then by cutting either a small slit or rotating our probe, we can just reach in and pull the target out. Punching that back down when we're done will leave virtually no mark at all if it's a shallow target. However, if the target is more than an inch, inch and a half deep, we're going to have to remove some surface dirt. And the best way to do that is with a small digger. We prefer that after the target is pinpointed that we dig a three-sided, sort of a horseshoe-shaped plug, being careful to keep it even around the edges. And then we can reach in and fold that back. At this time, we're probably going to find that the target is, is even deeper. But it's a good idea to go over it with our metal detector to make sure that it wasn't a small item that was caught in the clot itself. If, in fact, it is deeper, we take out our drop cloth. We lay that down so that the dirt that we're going to remove from the hole can be placed on the drop cloth. Normally, when we take it out, we'd either run it across the coil, or when we have enough out that we think we've probably found the target, pick up the detector and run it across the drop cloth itself. The beauty of this is once we've discovered the target, we can pick up the drop cloth and shake that dirt right back into the ground. This is particularly important if it's been a muddy situation, there's been rain in the area. Now you want to fold that three-sided plug back down. And when you stand up, putting some pressure on that, now we see an area that has not obviously been dug. Having recovered the hole, I'd like to review some of the uh, techniques and the tools that we've been using. The drop cloth, of course, is going to keep the uh, residual dirt uh, back in the hole when we're done. We have our digger for digging plugs more than an inch to an inch and a half deep, down to three, four, and on from there. We have a probe, screwdriver type tool, for digging the very shallow tools, rotating it and just pulling the target out of the ground. Notice that we are all wearing pouches. Pouches may seem simple, and, and in fact they are, but they need to be used properly. Most of them will have dual compartments, one for our good items, one for trash. The trash pocket should be used. It's there for a reason. You can have a nail apron, but again, that should have two pockets, one for trash, one for treasure. That will encourage you to carry out the items that you dig that really aren't uh, treasures, but you want to get rid of them when you get out into another area. Another place that we dig holes is along the beach or in a swimming area, and you would use uh, scoops and diggers of various sorts there. And again, we want to take the trash with us. We want to refill those holes. The people who sell you your metal detectors have a variety of digging tools available. They'll be happy to show you how to use them. Nice coin. Good nice. Did you find something interesting? I just found an old dime. Ah. Oh, great. Good. What year? 1902. 1908. 1908. Don't oh, have my glasses great. on. Huh. How many more down there do you suppose? Well, we just never know. That's what's great about this hobby. Mm -hmm. we, we have a booklet here with an old map that shows oh. that oh. Out, out here in the back of the backyard is where at one time the woodshed and the outhouse were located. Yeah, so could you're be. kind of in the right area yeah. out here yeah. in the back. Could be a lot of stuff out there somewhere. Gosh, that's interesting. Isn't it though? Yeah, it's got the old path here. Right. The powder room. Right. <laughs> powder room. <laughs> oh fun. Yeah. Well I'm anxious to see what else we can find. Sure thing. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. That's yes. very interesting. You're welcome. Thanks a lot for help. Good job, Randy. 